On today's podcast, we're joined by a great A&R executive, Kenny Saucedo. We discuss his journey as an intern with the Beastie Boys label Grand Royal, his A&R journey working at both Geffen Records and Warner Brothers before becoming head of A&R at Red Bull Records. We discuss the role that mentors have had in his career, how his criteria for signing artists today really goes beyond their music and live performance, and the unique elements that often make Red Bull an artist's choice to sign with over major labels in a competitive situation. In addition, he spoke about the importance of an artist team when he signs an artist, as well as the role that live performance plays in his signing criteria and what role genre plays in that. It was also an interesting discussion in that he got into the specific qualities of what he feels makes a great A&R executive and what it truly takes to get those jobs in A&R. We discussed something that was so interesting. He discusses the films, the records, and the artist that truly inspired inspired him in his life and ultimately saved his life. This is one conversation you don't want to miss. Insiders, are you ready? Welcome to Mugu TV's Insider Podcast, where our mission is to educate, empower, and engage artists and music business professionals who are dedicated to having a successful career in the new music industry. Here are your hosts, Rich Ezra and Eric Knight. Welcome back, insiders, to another episode of the Mubu TV Insider Podcast, where our mission is to educate, empower, and engage your music career. On today's episode, we're with Kenny Tick Salcedo, head of A&R at Red Bull Records, where we discuss how his criteria for signing artists goes beyond their music and live performance, and the unique elements that often make Red Bull Records an artist's first choice to sign with over major labels. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Hey, insiders. Are you looking to take your music career to the next level? Then you need to know about the Music Business Registry. The Music Business Registry is the leading music industry publisher of the most up-to-date contact information for major and independent record label A&R, music publishers, artist managers, music attorneys, music supervisors, and much, much more. The Music Business Registry is the trusted industry standard and source serving the music business community for over 28 years with the most accurate and up-to-date contact information available. Their titles include the A&R Registry, the Film and Television Music Monthly, the Music Publisher Registry, and the Music Attorney Registry. All of their publications are available in print, PDF, CSV, or online subscription. Visit them now at musicregistry.com and receive a 10% discount by using coupon code MUBUTV10 at checkout. That's musicregistry.com, coupon code MUBUTV10. When you're ready to put your music to work, musicregistry.com. Welcome back, insiders. Today's featured interview is with a great A&R man and a dear, dear friend, Kenny Tick Salcedo, who is the head of A&R for Red Bull Records. I have known Kenny for, a, I guess, many, many years, about, I guess, 15 years now. And it was a really fascinating conversation. I mean, we got into the criteria of what he looks for. We got into why Red Bull is such an important label for independent artists and how they really distinguish themselves in the marketplace where they're competitive in situations where they want to be signing talent with the major labels. That's the part that I thought was the most interesting. Yeah. I, I think this was an absolute masterclass on the subject of A&R and how somebody can be so passionate and showing the success behind that passion. Uh, this is an interview that you want to listen to when it ends, go back and listen to it again, because it, this has so much value to every insider that's listening to this interview. This one is an important one. I couldn't agree more, Eric. He, you know, the, the part that, that is the most interesting to me is when he gets into how music saved his life and how art and film and music and records and the relevance that they have to his life. I mean, that's, that's like the real passion that he has. And he's, he's one of the true, you know, die hard people who you don't get many of those left in the in the business today and that's what i loved about this interview it's it's incredible it's an amazing interview so insiders sit back take away all your distractions and stay tuned for our featured interview with kenny tick salcedo Kenny, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. No, thank you for having me, Rich. It's, uh, I'm a big fan of this conference and your work, so thank you. It's an honor. Thank you. I always like to start these conversations with the question, when in your life did you know 
that the music business was going to be your professional career path? Wow, this is uh, wow, this is one of my favorite questions I've ever been asked. <laughs> I honestly, th- no, I'm not even kidding. I mean, it really is one of my favorite questions I've ever been asked. I, I think for me, my my dad was in the military and my mother uh, worked at a bank, and I had zero ties to the music business in any way or shape or form. And growing up in the suburbs out outside of Los Angeles, California, I just didn't. Um, I really didn't know you can make a living in the music business. So for me, when I knew that this is like the path I was really going to do, because keep in mind, I had no reference point. I didn't think it was possible. I was an intern at Grand Royal Records in Atwater Village for the Beastie Boys. Yeah. And when Mike D from the Beastie Boys kind of took a liking to me and took me under his wing, and I went from being an intern to uh, a part-time college radio, uh, you know, a kid, you know, calling college radio, stations around the, the country, you know, it, it, you know, just calling them and, and working them on records at the time and knowing I was getting encouragement from a, one of my most favorite artists I've ever grew up listening to. And that's Mike D from the Beastie Boys. I think, I think having his validation and then being at a cool label like Grand Royal and an indie label, I was like, oh my God, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. This is what I want to do. Whether it was, you know, I was starting, I started off at as a promotions person, right? Like doing college radio promotions, but also being close to Mike in that era of the Beastie Boys. I mean, he was signing artists. So I was watching an artist do A&R, right? So for me, I was like, I want to be that guy. Right. Because he's an artist. He was signing artists. He had his own clothing line, his own record label, and he he had his own studio. So I was watching this guy be a Renaissance man in a way. And I was like, my God, I, I... I want to do that. And it right away, I think he kind of gave me a clear path of what I wanted to do. I hope that answers. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And And you've done that. Thank you. And if if you pick up the Beastie Boys book, he actually makes fun of me in the the book (laughs) in a good way. He says a kid named Kenny Salcedo, Kenny Tick Salcedo used to be at the the office before anyone drinking 7-Eleven coffee, running up and down the steps of the studio. And that's how I got the nickname Tick for being so hyper. So, So Grand Royal Beastie Boys gave me that nickname. That's wow, that's, that's a great story. That's yeah, and he wonderful. was kind of in the forefront of doing that, where now that's commonplace, where you have an artist that's involved in so many different areas. So he was kind of like doing that. Well said. I mean, I love that you just said that. He was. I mean, I, I, it was the template. It was the template that I would see later on. I mean, when I got involved with Grand Royal as an intern, I mean, it really happened as me wanting to be a journalist. I wanted... I didn't know there was an entry point in the music business whatsoever. I, I was in high school and I was doing really well in English classes and I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to write for Thrasher Magazine and Spin and Rolling Stone and and Source Magazine and write about punk and hip hop and everything that was happening at that time. And when I went to get this internship at Grand Royal, which was the Beastie Boys magazine, I went to that internship trying to do that. And then it just so happened, the GM at the time said, why don't you intern under the college radio department? And Wow. Me being a kid in my late teens, I was like, all right, but I can't believe you can make a living right. talking about records. And sure enough, <laughs> we made a living talking about, about records, records, right? Yeah. But that was what, uh, that's what happened. And, I, and watching Mike have Grand Royal Magazine, the record label, uh, the studio, G-Sun Studios, which, you know, which is infamous, uh, still there in Atwater Village, uh, un- run by just many different people, creatives now. Um, It was magic. It was magic to see uh, that happen and be at the forefront of seeing somebody build their kind of mini little empire and environment. And now you see so many artists do it, um, self-contained, you know, have their own studio, have their own clothing line, get into acting. You know, now that's a very common thing. You look everyone from Dominic Fike to before Dominic Fike, Childish right. Gambino, yeah. um, acting and making music and- And a TV show. And TV and, show, yeah. and, well said. Yeah, exactly. it's just, and, and it's fascinating listening to you because I'm, I'm hearing my own story of my own I life. I know, Rich. I, I, I had a promotion. That's how I started. I started in promotion at A&M. As a kid, I know you, I, I mean, honestly, you have such an incredible story um, and not to pry, but well, how incredible was that too? And you had no one to help you. You just went in there and just figured it out. As just as, as, as in interest. Yeah, I had uh-huh. interest and I just, I learned about what promotion was and calling radio stations and checking records out. And, and then from there I did, I, I went into um, promotion marketing at Arista. That's Bef- where it be- was, right? Before, well, it was at A&M first. Got it. Got the internship at A&M and did exactly what you did in, in, in radio promotion, not in college, but in radio promotion, yeah, calling in stations. Tri- and- call it, yeah, and what's, what's amazing about that job, I think for anyone 
uh, especially just in, when you speak to college radio kids, they're so in shape with what's going on culturally, multi-genre. They're, you know, I was getting tipped to unsigned artists. In a weird way, college radio set me up for A&R because these, these DJs were these like, music geeks just like me right that were these music nerds that just were up late at night wanting to play music because we love it right it's our lives right. we just love it and they were turning me on oh by the way do you know this unsigned band or my buddy in portland uh weirdly enough sending me modest mouse before wow. modest mouse was signed or sending me um early demos of, you know, I remember Raucous Records, which was a great hip hop label. Right. And they sent me demos uh, of stuff they were signing. And it just was amazing trading music back then um, with people and just finding new music that you later look back on and you're like, wow. And now music yeah. trading is so easy. I could just send you a Spotify right. playlist and, right. and it's just so easy, but it's beautiful. It's not, I'm not, a, I'm not jaded about it. I actually think it's, it's, it's much easier to, well, it's now harder to process because it's so much now. Yeah. Now we're getting bombarded where before Rich would get a, a demo tape or a demo CD or just a demo in general and Rich could actually spend the evening just focusing Listening. on that. Where right. now De Rich is getting flooded with a exactly. playlist of 80 songs. Rich, check out my new band. Right. <laughs> and Rich is just right. like, oh my God. Yeah. Yes, like I was <laughs> saying much. at the panel, it's that tsunami that comes at us every day. Tsunami. You, yeah. you get it. I, I mean, get the tsunami. Every daily. day, yeah, because yeah. of your position. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. This is Eric, and I'm, I'm so honored to have you on the show. Honor. Um, you know, Kenny, you're head of a and for a label that is owned by a major brand, you know, Red Bull. What is your criteria both creatively and non-creatively for signing an artist today? Well, you know, I'm blessed because working for a brand-owned record label, I mean, Red Bull is just, it has a cool factor to it. Uh, whether people drink the drink or not, it doesn't matter because it's such a pure company. They believe in their their product. They believe in the athletes they promote. They believe in their employees. Um, it's a fascinating, I mean, my, my boss and mentor, Greg Hammer, hired me. Um, he basically kind of gave me the kind of ethos and kind of told me about, and, and I thought to myself, no way could it be Shangri-La. No way, no way, no way. And sure enough, you go there and you're like, wow, this is pretty amazing that they really, the company is privately owned, right? But it is a true indie label. The label goes through in India, it goes through the orchard. Right. And we sign one to two to three artists at a time, which means like Rich said, we could hyper-focus mm. on each artist. Think about this. We have a band called Beartooth. Yes, which, we which I was just gonna, yeah. We signed them in 2013. And it's an amazing success story because Sat Bisla, Rich and Monty were probably one of the first three executives outside Red Bull Records that were early fans of it. Matt Pinfield also being one of them. Right. The band had, didn't have the big stats and we stood by them. They're making their fifth album. They could sell out massive Right. Places. Speaking of Caleb, another uh, artist Caleb, that- Massive that, places. That writes, produce, all of, everything. Writes, produces everything. Did, they sell out all over the world. Um, pure, he writes, he mixes, he produces it all himself. I mean, he's a total prodigy. And we stood by him for five albums and we're about to, we're making the fifth album now. What's funny about that is another a and a label said, my God, you stood by that artist, not just for two albums. Three is kind of an anomaly nowadays. Right. Even two is an anomaly right. if you don't make it. Five. We're yeah. now, Aces are making their third album. Think about right. that. They're all under 25. Uh, they're all under, you know, 25, 26 range, but, but, they, but think about this. They're on their third album and we stood by them. And I think the beauty, why I give those examples is to answer your question. I don't think I could have had the true artist development with the artists I believe in with Greg that right. I could at any other label but Red Bull Records. We stood by every one of those artists. And I, and I love what major labels do. Trust me, I was there. I worked for Tom Wally, who's one of my favorite execs out there. And it's one of those things where you think about that, right? And you think about, you have a clock on you. You're at a major yep. label. The artists have a clock on you. You as an A&R executive, even with somebody of Rich Ezra's pedigree would have a clock on him. You'd have a clock. Rich has to deliver right. in these two years of his contract to have hits, to keep perpetuating how massive that company is. Where Red Bull, I have to, be, I, I really believe this uh, wholeheartedly that we sign artists that have to make a cultural impact. With that being said, that's the mandate that I was given, which is why we stood by Beartooth, which is why we stand by Aces, which is why myself, CB, Greg, we stand by Blast. We stand by Wonder Girls imprint. We really empower these artists to grow and build almost like little, what, what Mio said, we build businesses out of these artists to where when the Aces were doing 17 people at a show, now they're selling out the Fonda. Now it's a real business. Now the Aces can sell out the Fonda clean 
and Rich and myself and you can go to a show and have a beer and, and watch this incredible band play right. with kids singing every word back. That's the joy I get for work, from working there and being the head of A&R. And I think that's, and then my own personal gratitude is knowing that I'm working artists where I'm not having to chase stats, where the stats, the data is only to help validate or help maneuver what we're doing, whether it's marketing or, or promotions or whatever we're doing. If something's raising its hand data wise, then I think that helps us go to radio or maybe we put a little bit of marketing dollars in that region, correct? So, right. so then I look at it like this. I mean, that's great, but for my soul, what feeds my soul is being able to be at a company that really wants to tap into culture. Right. So like we have Red Bull Studios, which we don't charge artists for that. That's, uh, that's friends of Red Bull Records. That's artists on Red Bull Records. And sometimes we could create magic. Terrace Martin, one of my favorite artists in the world, uh, has recorded at, at Red Bull Studios and worked on his jazz project. Uh, Rance over at 1500 has worked on his uh, musician project. Um, many artists who aren't even signed to the label have touched on it. And that's the beautif beautiful thing is being able to touch artists in that way and make music that's going to last the test of time. Yeah, so Red Bull is truly artist development. It's oriented. true artist yeah. development. And, and you know, I really, I really believe that. I believe Red Bull Records is about artist development. You, you know, you've touched on some things here that I would like you to expand upon, which is the whole concept of, you know, Red Bull really is looking for creatively things that touch the culture, mm -hmm. things that move the culture. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us about, because it's a unique entity, can you talk to us about some of the advantages or unique practical elements that a Red Bull Records can offer that another label cannot? Because you guys have a lot. Well, thank you. You know what I mean? I mean, I could speak, you know, I love that, Richard. You said it so eloquently. It's like Red Bull Records. I could speak to just Red Bull Records. The brand is amazing. I'm a massive fan of the brand. But Red Bull Records, right? What we do, think of it as an indie label with the resources of a major because we have an executive at the, the company named Scott Slutsky. And Scott is amazing. What he does is brand integration. Right. He, he's the reason why you can see an artist on Red Bull Records play a Red Bull platform or a stage at a Red Bull festival. Or maybe there's integration where Albert Hammond Jr. is playing Formula One. Beartooth is leaping out of a plane <laughs> promoting one of their records. Right, right. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's incredible. So I think with Red Bull being a global brand, yeah. we have boots on the ground at every country. Exactly. Think about that, right? Yeah. And Rich, I think, I think one of the things that watching Rich and Sat speak over the years, and I was a, an executive over at Warner, what is now Warner Records, it was Warner Brothers Records when I was there under Tom Wally's regime and Craig Aronson. I think I always try to use the word global but I really didn't know what that meant until right. I went to go work for Red Bull Records. And Rich would use that word because he had tentacles all over the world. Sat would use that word because you look at an entity like a Worldwide, right. that's a true global company. At Warner Brothers Records, I was a US based a &R who wanted to sign artists on a global platform, but sometimes you're limited in, in what you can do to help promote those artists. I think at, at Red Bull Records, I truly work across all platforms, it's amazing. It's amazing. What, let me ask you, what, what can Red Bull Records offer prospective artists that you're looking to sign that is unique from other labels? I think you've kind of touched on that with, with your previous answer here, but what do you think are those? I, th I think a hands-on indie approach. Um, I don't think, you know, when we've competed, I mean, listen, I'll tell you right now, we've competed with the, for the Aces, we beat a major label. And I'll tell you why. Beartooth, we competed against a major label, we beat them for that major label. And all those majors will admit they did, I hate using the word win or lose because no one wins or lose in this business right. because it's about the artist. But I will say this. Red Bull Records won in the bidding war for the Aces, Beartooth, and Blast. And, the, and all major labels were in the running to sign each of those artists. And the reason why all three of those artists chose us is for the hands-on indie approach. Yet the real support and resources that, you know, and it's not about, for us, it's not about the money. It's about a cultural impact. They know we're gonna stick by them. They know that they're gonna get Greg Hammer on the phone. They know they're gonna get CB on the phone. They know they're gonna get Nikki, uh, Scott, myself. Uh, you know, they're gonna get people, executives on the phone 24 seven. We're hands, all hands on deck. There's 28 of us, uh, three in the UK, all in, the, all in LA right now. And we have, we're, we're really have a hands-on approach that's what we can guarantee those artists. And they all hear about it, they talk to people. Also, as far as um, resources, we also have in-house PR, in-house digital marketing, international team. And our international team quarterbacks 
those boots around the world. Wow. So we offer people a true- It's a true integration, yeah. A true brand integration and global platform, right? So you think about that, they can call if something's wrong, suppose Rich is managing one of our, suppose Rich is managing one of our bands and Rich is like, listen, there's something happening in Brighton. We have to make all hands on deck. Right. Let's support that. Let's figure out what marketing dollars we need to spend to get that artist in that territory and let's go. So that's, I mean, that, that has been something that I think Red Bull Records was great at from its early inception, uh, from the very first regime of the company, uh, led by Greg Hammer at that time and, and AWOL Nation and those first, that first era of Red Bull Records into now. I mean, listen, I mean, recent example, Blast was starting to get some traction in local LA radio. We fanned that fire. When most major labels were saying bad things about Red Bull Records, oh, they're never gonna get you on the radio. They're never gonna do this. I mean, we have gold plaques that are about to be platinum because we did exactly what they said we couldn't do. Right. Does that make sense? So it's like, yeah. we oh, really yeah. hyper-focus on those certain areas that, let's just say an executive- You like super you, serve them, you super, super serve, serve them. Yeah. And, and you know, a guy like Rich would probably identify, hey, that little market, there's something going on. Okay, let's go. Let's figure, let's do a low dose show. Let's do something. Let's get that artist in that marketplace. Let's go. It's amazing. It's interesting in listening to you, Kenny, because, you know, one of the things that I'm realizing in, in your answers is that you're identifying the criteria of what you're looking for without even doing that well by said. talking about the values. <laughs> well, yeah, no, thank you are. You. No, Rich, thank you. That, I'm very flattered. And you know what? It's funny. I, I think you're, you're the, you're, like I said, you're a great moderator. I think somebody like me, I'm constantly thinking. I'm, I'm, I'm a creative executive, right? I came up, uh, you know, uh, being a journalist, um, making beats and, and loving A&R. So like somebody like Rich can pull out all that information. And I love artists and I'm able to, when, when, we're, when we're able to super, uh, seed and super feed what they're doing and really hyper focus and really, really, really push the boundaries on what people think it's possible. I think that's kind of what, why we do it, why we do what we do. Absolutely. And you deal with self-contained acts. We do. You deal with self-contained acts. Which right there, yeah, bear blast. Tooth, blast. The and aces, now, and now I mean, aces are starting to become more and more self-contained. They used one producer on this album and I could tell you all of them are becoming proficient at recording and, and making music. So it's, it's unbelievable to see those artists now at the age of 25. We saw them when they were 18, 19. So at 25 to be able to be self-contained, it's unbelievable. It's amazing to watch. And to see the growth. And to see the growth. The growth to, and to see the growth for sure. And to see, uh, you know, and to even work with established acts, Albert Hammond Jr. To yeah. see Albert come into his second album with Red Bull Records, which is gonna be amazing amazing to watch that grow and we've taken that from not just the a side project from the from the guitarist and the strokes but to albert hammond jr making this next iconic album for 2023 how important in your position is the team of an artist when you're considering signing them is that something that goes into your consideration when you're going to make that commitment you know i will tell you some of the biggest mistakes i've made in the business is just not thinking about the team and just put you know i'm think about this I sign off gut, you know, I sign, my, my career will dictate that. I, I will tell you that from signing Terrace Martin, Wiz Khalifa with no bidding war to Aces and, and Beartooth and all of these artists, right? Uh, Blast, you know, CB and I did Blast together and, and that was also gut and passion, right? But you think about this, right, with, with time, um, I've been blessed to having great management teams with all of those artists I just met, mentioned, right? But there are some artists that um, I can't talk about where I just, you fall in love with their music, you right. hear that voice, and you sometimes think, oh my God, I just met that manager and I, I have a feeling this is gonna be a very punishing, grueling situation, but maybe the songs will make it all worth it. And then you have to realize that that manager is an extension of that artist. Yep. And I promise you, the biggest mistakes in my life if, is not listening to my gut and still signing that artist when I knew that manager was detrimental to their career and let's just say, you probably never heard of those artists because of that situation, right? right? Because, and I, I'm sure many A&Rs, many executives, people like Rich and Sat have tried so hard to help these artists and that management team or manager is standing in the way. And I will never be the one to speak badly about a manager. I, I just don't know, because at the end of the day, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors being an A&R executive, right? Or a producer or, or executives like you too. But um, I think uh, you have to be very smart 
on that signing, especially nowadays with how hard it is to cut through. Like Mio said, that you need to vet everything from not just the star quality of the artist and the music, but who is representing this artist. Right. Because that is going to tell everything. Everything, yeah. It's a direct extension of what they're, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And it's, you know, on a practical level, yeah. you're asking as a Red Bull executive, can my efforts, time, energy, and commitment be supported by this person or, or, or not? And if they can't be, well I, said. Well, I, I don't want to be... Well said. Uh, yeah. no, I, I, you know, and sometimes you'll hang on to it and... You know, people will, will say certain things about managers. Oh, this manager is a punisher. But, they, but you have to realize this. Even if you hang on to something and you have success and that manager is still a punisher with you and your staff, the one thing, I'm not a woulda, coulda, shoulda guy. I think we all are deep down in this business, sadly. But you can't be in life. You can't be in this business. No woulda, coulda, shoulda. You have to realize right. that it was all for a reason to get you to this certain place, right? Right. And sometimes there's always those moments where you think to yourself, God, we just barely made it with that horrific partner and a manager right. that is never happy, right? We just made it. Can you imagine if we didn't have that? If we just made it and we're having success, can you imagine if you had a real partner that brings value? My God, you'd be probably platinum and you'd be fucking Kid Leroy or Justin right. Bieber or one of these guys you know, that are just massive. You know right. what I mean? So you got to think about those things. And, and I think about that now um, at this stage of my career. I have to. I, 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 I don't have the... I used to be able to cheat code it or turn a blind, you know, I turn a blind eye to it, right? And say, you know, that manager's not great, but it's, it's about the artist. And, and it always is about the artist, but you can't do it nowadays without great management. You cannot. Yeah. I, I, and, and to be honest, to be blunt, I will not green light a signing if I have a red flag with a manager. I will not do it. Hmm. And I will not tell why. I will just be like, you know what? We're not the right home. Right. And they're going to have to figure it out themselves. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just, there's so many great artists out there. I look at this amazing view and there's thousands and thousands of undiscovered talent just here in Los Angeles alone, let alone the rest of the world that if somebody can't figure it out with their team, there's going to be another. Hey, insiders, we hope that you've been enjoying our featured interview. Stay tuned because we've got so much more value coming your way. But before we dive back in, a word from our sponsor. Hey, Rich, you're the founder, CEO, legend of Music Business Registry. Tell us what the Music Business Registry is all about. Well, what it's about, Eric, is it's a company that is designed to provide the most accurate and up-to-date contact information for the music business. So if someone is looking to reach the A&R community, if someone is looking to reach music publishers, if someone needs to reach artist managers, if someone needs to reach music attorneys, if someone's looking to place their music into film and television and needs to reach all the music supervisors, that's the contact information that we provide. We've been doing it for 28 years. We're sort of the industry standard, if you will, uh, for the music business uh, and, and have been serving them since 1992. So that's what we do. Amazing. So if I wanted to find out, let's say a uh, and uh, people from uh, Warner Brothers, let's say, I can just go in there and find that in the A&R registry? Absolutely. You'll find all of the Warner Brothers in there. You'll find the Warner Brothers in LA, Warner Brothers in New York, Warner Brothers in Nashville, Warner Brothers in London, Warner Brothers, you know, probably in Australia as well. So those are the, the main territories that we cover. Amazing. And we're offering all of our insiders right now that are listening, if you visit musicregistry.com, and use coupon code MUBUTV10 at checkout, you'll get a 10% discount off your first order. That's musicregistry.com, coupon code MUBUTV10. Anything else you want to say, Rich? Well, when you're ready to put your music to work, musicregistry.com. Um, how much weight uh, do, do you place in an artist's live performance ability when considering signing them? Does it vary with genre? It varies with genre. I mean, I could tell you right now, I believe bands will get better with time. Um, I think with experience, you can kind of see the potential. I mean, I've gone to a show where it was still baby and it was still developing, but we took a shot and now the band is, is so comfortable on stage and just massive. It, you know, but also I'll tell you, it, it varies with genre. We've signed, I mean, one of the biggest criteria Red Bull record, Records had before I was even there was they wouldn't sign an artist unless they saw it live. That was the truth. Before I was ever an executive at Red Bull Records, I was an A&R at Warner Records at that time. Um, I've never fully subscribed to that just because I think nowadays it changes with genre and I think people get better with time. I just do. I think right. if you have a, a vision and a belief that they could, then take the shot take and, the shot, and yeah. swing. But if you feel like, oh my God, that's the DNA and it's never going to get better than that, then that probably would affect if I'm going to sign that artist, to be honest. But right. I haven't seen that yet. I've seen... I've seen the aces only get better. 
oh, we watched Blast only get better. We watched Flaws only get better. Gavin Haley is a perfect example. I watched Gavin Haley uh, play an acoustic set just uh, with, with the A&R team at that time. Um, and you saw him get better. He just opened up for Tate McRae. So it's like you, you watch them get better with time and you're like, my God, if you can keep just feeding the fire and keep them working, then they're gonna, it's, it's, it's like anything. You do right. this. You, you do it enough, you get better. Look, look yeah. at Richard moderating, man. My guy, I was very impressed. I was it's like, like the come master, on. yeah. We're yeah listening I was like to, a yeah. Jedi, man. I was yeah. up there sweating. He was just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go. Uh, it's just, you know what it is? I don't look at it as moderating. I look at it as just the art of conversation. That, well, you're, you're a master at it. <laughs> yep, <laughs> Thank you. He definitely is. You know, I, 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 you, you've been so generous with your time here with us, and, Thank you. and I, I appreciate it immensely. And I, I want to ask you a, a question because you've had such deep experience in this field. What, in your mind, are the specific qualities that make a great A&R person? I think a great A&R person is integrity. I think... The, the belief and trust in yourself and others, I think that is so important for an A&R an A &R person to have. And you could grow into those things. Um, of course, everyone would say confidence, but I think like anyone, you know, I think, you know, you look at anything in life, I think we all feel just the same, right? There's one of my favorite, favorite quotes is, is a boxing trainer named Customato. And he trained uh, Mike Tyson. And he said, yeah. he said, the hero and the coward feel just the same. It's what they do. It's what the hero does that makes him the hero and what the coward doesn't do that makes him the coward. And I think a is the same thing. It's like, we have to believe in our gut. We can't lose faith. And we're always gonna lose faith. We're just, we're, we're, think about it. We're the closest thing to the artists. We're the warriors, uh, all of us, all, anyone who does a and in, in records or publishing, even managers who dabble in a and yeah. and executives who dabble in a and um, we're the conduit. We're the ones that the artist trusts. So we're almost like the big brother or parent to these artists. They, they need us. You know, one of the last things, uh, uh, my, when I went to go see my mother a couple of weeks ago and she said, uh, these artists need you. And as simple as that sounded, it's so true. And I think we always, as executives, a and executives, we have to be reminded that we are the conduit. We are the protector and the believers in these artists, even when our own belief is shaken to the core about that artist, even when they don't believe in themselves. We're the coaches, we're the custom autos, we're the, we're the ones that have to believe and sometimes fake it until we make it. Sometimes, sometimes even lie to, your, lie to ourselves and say, you know what, he, they're gonna make it, even if you're shaken, because guess what? There's something deep down that says they are. Yeah. Right. So I hope that. Yeah. Answers. No. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's, absolutely. it's that core belief. It's that core that, belief. Yeah. That and core I think belief. We need, I think we need that as A and R executives. And you need the ear. And you need you need to always trust your ear. Even if even if your boss doesn't believe it or other peers don't believe it, you have to trust that ear. I would have never signed with Khalifa if no one, you know, like listen, my own boss at the time, uh, at, you know, Craig Aaron. I sent it to Craig Aronson. He believed in it. We signed Wiz Khalifa together. And, and I love my mentors at Warner Records at the time. They didn't hear it. They didn't understand what Wiz was. But I trusted my gut even to the very end, even to when Wiz parted ways with Warner and I parted ways with Warner at that time. I still believed. I, I believed even before Black and Yellow when he was labelless yeah. under a little indie with Rostrum. And I think all of us as a &Rs have to have that feeling of even your, your, your W's, your L's are not really losses, they're, they're lessons, Yeah. right? So the wins and like us as ath like athletic executives, us as athletes, right? We, they say we have wins and losses or you bet on the right, you know, I was told one day with Wiz, oh, you bet on the wrong horse. That's what one of these executives told me, you bet on the wrong horse, I'm, you know, he, he wasn't a star, he wasn't, and he's one of the most iconic artists here in the yeah. last 20, 30 years. Right. But you look at that, I stood by it. I, I trust me, there were many nights at home, I cried and uh, you know, I, I, hate, uh, I hate admitting that, I cried and I didn't question my belief though. I said, I'm, you know, this guy hopefully shows them whether it's now or 10 years from now. And I believe that in a lot of these artists that we work on. But I believe there's a lot of people like me who've had those L's and W's and they're all lessons. lessons they yeah. all led to where I'm at now. And it seems like the, the, the trend with all the A&R people that we've interviewed, mm. it's all based on their gut. It's and, all gut. Yes. I mean, listen, the data is there to yeah. help. The data is there to help. Right. But trust me, what people forget about A&R, they all want to do the job, but then they forget that you can lose this job at any time. Just like life, nothing is ever guaranteed. <laughs> right. You're on the, you, are, you are on the chopping block 24-7, but you've you got to do what you believe in. So we're the warriors. We're the ones taking the punches in the ring 
and could get not, it's kill or be killed. You know what I mean? It right. really is a blood sport. It really is. And, 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 and it, depending on what company you're at. Um, but um, I respect them all. I respect them all, whether I know them or don't know them. I think anyone with an A&R title uh, in their signature in 2022 is a, is a special individual and they have to hang on to that for as long as they can because like my mother said, uh, the artists need you. They do. These artists, these artists uh, need us so badly, especially now. Yeah. Are, are there any particular things that an artist can do to get on your radar or on the radar of a and that you Absolutely. would advise an artist to do? Yeah, I, I, I believe, you know, there used to be an old saying. Um, I remember I used to hear uh, a great, great a and like Luke Wood and Ron Handler say, um, don't, 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 uh, don't worry, we'll find you, right? I think now with social media and what we have, I think if they can keep finding that balance of integrity, and you know, some people say you got to get your TikTok socials up or your socials up. I think having integrity, still being active in whatever platform suits you. TikTok right. may not work for certain artists. Instagram may not work. You know what I mean? Certain things may not work, but getting, honing in on that one or two things that you know you're great at, whether it's a live show or it's a YouTube video of you doing a cover um, and really reaching out to these labels. Um, a lot of labels say they don't take unsolicited demos. We all get those blind, we all get blind copied on demos. Right. We all get bombarded. Keep sending them. I mean, I, I don't, I tell artists keep pushing, keep flooding emails, keep pushing because at some point, maybe there might be an a &R executive tired. She or he uh, may come home late at night and you never know what they click on exactly. and you never know what they hear. And you hear those stories of great a &R executives like Mike Karen. Uh, who found a song just by listening late at night or, or Craig Kalman or, you know, Aton or, or all these amazing execs, you know, um, who discovered these, these records, whether it's a song that they ended up purchasing or putting together, a hit song they put together, or it's an artist that they just randomly heard. I also think getting your music to people that you know is a re reliable source. So somebody like Sat or Rich Ezra or people like that, they do send music. They don't right. send it often because it, for them, it's a precious exchange, you know what I mean? I think for, for Rich to send me an artist, I think it'd have to be an artist that he felt I was the right executive for and the label was the right executive for. No disrespect to myself or Red Bull Records. He, right. he might want to send it to Aton or somebody like that just because it might be the better culture. Uh, right. Artist-wise, but I think keep getting your music out there. Don't give up. Just keep sending it out, and and don't and use those use those platforms, whatever is specific for you, whether it's TikTok or Instagram or or any of these things, and YouTube. Let me ask you, Kenny. Throughout your life, have there been any books or movies yeah. that have truly been inspirational to you, professionally speaking? Oh my God! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my God! Thank Rich. You are <laughs> you're a true uh, artist. Artist. I, I love that. Um, you know, I think uh, there's some amazing movies. Um, I think uh, books and uh, books and, and movies. I think. Um, Movies, The Kid Stays in the Picture um, is oh, an amazing Oh, love the, that one, yeah. The Kid Stays in the Picture because that, I, think, oh, I think if you're an A&R executive, the cheat code is this, and, and if you get anything, if I was to pass away tomorrow, as long as you show up and you show up and you stay in the picture, something's going to happen. And you can't really look at it as good or bad. You look at how long I've been doing this, right? I stayed in it. I just stayed in it. And, and, and people, you know, I've had many younger executives say, well, don't you, don't, didn't you ever worry about Billboard 30 under 30 or 50 under 50 or 100 under 100? And it's like, <laughs> God bless these younger executives for thinking that way. It doesn't matter because you know what it always comes down to? It's the artists. Yeah. It comes down to the artists. I just referenced Lenny Warnaker, who signed Prince. Do you think Lenny gives a fuck about 30 under right. 30 or 40? <laughs> right. Zero, and he never did. Right. None of the greats do. None of them do. Right. Um, Jody Gerson. These amazing people, uh, Ashley Newton, uh, none of them do. And I think when I saw The Kid Stays in the Picture, which was given to me uh, by a great musician, his name's Wag. Uh, he was in a band called Mary's Danish. He told oh. me to watch that movie. And I watched it. Uh, Mike D, my mentor, uh, you know, he has turned me on to some incredible movies. I just loved it for the cinemat cinematography and the story. I thought Taxi Driver, to me, changed my life when I saw it. Not for the gore or for the darkness of the movie, but when you look at a movie like Taxi Driver, so many movies have tried to emulate it now. 
uh, whether it's the movies like The Joker or movies like um, any movie you see Ryan Gosling in. I mean, he's he. I think he was beyond uh, uh, influenced by the by De Niro's performance in that. Um, and it's not being the tough guy. If you watch that movie. The movie's about vulnerability. The yes. movie's about loneliness. Loneliness, yeah. yes. God's Lonely Man. It's yes, based right. off a book. Yes, and, yeah. and I think all of us as executives, um, we could get up on that stage and you get all the accolades. It is a lonely business. And it is a business that the artists are lonely. And we're lonely as executives because you don't have immediate gratification right away. Even if you think something's immediate gratification, there is, we don't know the narratives or the stories these people have behind closed doors, right? Or the mental illness or the conditions people struggle with. No one knows. Everyone thinks, oh, that person got it, or that person's an A&R because of privilege, or that person's an executive, or that person got this because of this, or he's so and so. But no one really knows how hard it is to stay in a business that you can't really quantify, and there's so many intangibles, right? So I think to me, Taxi Driver is one of my most, uh, in that movie, I try to watch it as often as possible. Um, I love the music. I think it's just, oh. I think De Niro's performance is unbelievable. And I think Taxi Driver to me is fantastic. And I think, um, I love movies like True Romance. I love Alfred Hitchcock movies like The mm. Birds and uh, Rear Window and Vertigo. I love Vertigo and Rear Window just because I just, I just love escaping and going somewhere. And, and Vertigo to me, I love those plot twists. And, and it's like a symphony watching yeah. Hitchcock's Hitchcock movies. Hitchcock is a master. I, I mean, so I watch those. And I think for me, uh, you know, I think I, I go back to all of those movies and I think cinema played a really important part in, in my growth uh, as an executive and, and doing those things. And, and, and you know, for me, um, books of it, by God, there's so many, <laughs> there's, there's just so many books. I mean, I love, um, I love everything from Hemingway to self-help books from, from, uh, to, to even m- most recently I bring up this book. I just read the Beastie Boys book, which I fell in love with. And I thought that was an iconic, uh, music book that I think everyone should listen to, whether you love the Beastie Boys or not, or even know who they are. I think if you grew up loving rock or punk or hip hop or all genres. This band was at the forefront of breaking down genres Absolutely. and being commercially successful. So I love, um, I love that book. Uh, that's one of my recent things I've, I've wanted to pick up and just go back to. It's interesting you mentioned the music of um, Taxi Driver. I too was an enormous fan of the music of Taxi Driver. It's done by Bernard Herrmann. It was the last score that he ever did before he died. Thank and you he, for telling me that. Yeah, and, and he was the famous composer of Hitchcock. He was, a, which is why, and, that, and you know, used which him. is yeah. so crazy because I didn't know that. And I'm obsessed with both Hitchcock movies right. and that early Scorsese uh, yeah. films. You know, everyone points to The Godfather, Godfather 1, 2, 3. There was a period where I was really obsessed with those films, but I'm really, I mean, Taxi Driver is a movie I watch maybe two or three times a year. Probably about the I, same time that well, we watched The Godfather. We just went we to The just Godfather went to the 50th, 50th anniversary. anniversary. Oh my God, you know yeah. what I mean? And I love The Godfather. I mean, The Godfather's a masterpiece, yeah. but listening yeah. to the music of Taxi Driver, oh, yeah. I think, I mean, and it's so somber and so beautiful, and you see his expressions of being lonely, and struggling with paranoia in that cab all alone, picking up strangers and the volatility of just that time in place in New York City in the 70s and Times Square, you just can't, um, you really just can't even say it in words on how beautiful that movie is. Yeah. It's, it's mad. That movie is magic. Yeah. Magic is that movie. You know what I mean? And, and records. I think Miles Davis. I think Beastie Boys Check Your Head. I think there's so many mo- so many records I go back to that reminds me of my... Paul's my, Boutique. Paul's Boutique. That's a masterpiece you know, you know as far I mean? as I'm and, concerned. And, exactly. And I go back to those records and I listen to them and it's it's magic listening to Miles Davis and, and, and Thelonious Monk and, and Beastie Boys and punk music and Bad Brains and Minor Threat oh, yeah. and listening to all of those bands um, and Kate Bush, my brother turned me on to Kate Bush. And I think listening to Kate Bush albums and not just the trendy songs, but the songs that, that people don't know, uh, B-sides, things like that, Talking Heads, um, early hip hop, um, Tribe Called Quest, oh, yeah. uh, De La Soul. De La Soul, De La Soul. Yeah. All of these, you know, these are, these are 
records that we'll remember for the test of time. You know, I saw Peanut Butter Wolf uh, post something. Uh, I love his label, Stone's Throw. He posted something about how De La Soul, Three Feet High and Rising, influenced him to do Stone's Throw. And you think about that. Same thing with me. I think Beastie Boys, Check Your Head, Save My Life. I think, you know, I think this, this somebody said to me, uh, especially during the pandemic, uh, you know, take a break. We're not saving lives here, right? And I don't mind taking breaks. It's good to take breaks, right? But I will tell you this, we are saving lives. I really believe that as, as executive, the three of us at this table, um, hopefully what we say here sparks somebody to pick up Taxi Driver for the first time or the records that, or, or look up the composer that Rich just mentioned or watch those Hitchcock films or listen to the Beastie Boys or pick up those books, right? And you pick up those books and you think about the history and then you listen to it now and you could equate all of these things into what, where the world is now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, everything, you know, everything ties back to the past, just like the past ties into the future. Kenny, what advice can you offer our listeners who are wanting to pursue a career as an ANR person, just like you? I think, you know, listen, I, I have friends who say, oh, don't do it, don't do it. And, you know, I, I, I'm a big believer in what I do. I, I believe, you know, some people say it's not for the faint of heart. I don't agree with that either. I, I believe that this is uh, A&R, welcomes anyone um, who truly wants to do it and is willing to make the sacrifices that need to happen to do it, which means there might be early mornings and late nights, which means you're playing the role of a therapist and, an, and a coach yes. and somebody who really wants to push the boundaries uh, of someone's music and, and give them, you know, really give them the confidence that they need to go that extra mile. So that, that, that musician wants to, or, or artist wants to run one mile, you push him to do two, you know what I mean? But you do it with a great bedside manner and grace and encouragement, and you know when to pull in and pull out. So that encouragement, I, I absolutely think, and I encourage it uh, to start off independently. That's my advice to them, uh, just like the way Rich did for a second in between his jobs and positions at um, record labels, same thing with Sat. Um, be a bit entrepreneurial nowadays, right. start off, independent and and start off trying to touch all aspects of the artist in management that's what i would say i think managers nowadays in this era 2022 going <laughs> these young managers are ARs and managers all in one yep. but it forces them to become ARs it's forcing them to have hard critical conversations on the artist's music why did you do this why did you craft the song this way why is the chorus hitting this early or why isn't it how do you feel about moving that or do you not? Is that, do you feel that's a compromise? Then let's not do it. I don't want you to feel compromised, but we do need some songs that could be drivers. Those are the hard conversations you have to have as a young manager and a and r And I think if you could get in uh, on a boutique level, the way I did at Grand Royal, which was an indie label, you know, if you can get in to do a and r at an indie label or get in to do a and r at a management company or be an independent manager while you're working your day job and a and r things, on your own to get your chops up. That is the best advice I can give anyone in 2022 about trying to get into A&R. It's not just about hitting up Kenny at Red Bull Records or CB at Red Bull Records or, or Aton and saying, are you hiring an A&R? I'd be your assistant. Or I'd be. It's not about that. It, it used to be about that. Right. Now it's about really showing your chops. Just like we ask the artist to show and prove, we as executives have to constantly show and prove. We have to, we have to. And finally, what advice would you have for artists who want to pursue a career as a re professional recording artist today? My advice would be stick to your guns, stick to your heart, be strong because it's hard it, and it, it is beyond hard. You will have rejection. I mean, think about this. They, they couldn't imagine the rejection great artists like Wiz Khalifa had. And I saw it. I saw artists, I hear stories about people like Blast saying that people passed on them. Aces people passed on, they showcased. And it's heartbreaking when you showcased, when you showcase for a label and nothing happens. It's heartbreaking when you take a meeting. I mean, we don't see it because we move on to the next one. Um, but only now do I reflect on that, right? And think about what they must go through when they go home and maybe a family member says, how'd that meeting go, right? How did that meeting go? How did that meeting or how did that showcase go? And let's just, say, let's just say there's no fruition after that. And the artist doesn't get the deal. And when the artist doesn't get the deal, it's depressing and heartbreaking. But you use that music to turn that loss <laughs> into a lesson. And you use that music and you hone in your craft and you work harder and harder and harder and push forward. You think if everyone said no, right? If you just kept, if you kept just hearing the no's, you couldn't get out of bed in the morning. 
you have to really just push yourselves. I think the artists need to be strong-minded and have a great support group around them. Um, I think I think having, uh, if you don't have family or don't have, please find someone to talk to. And uh, whether it's a therapist or a family member, or a coach or an executive, I mean, those are things I probably never would have said years back, but you do need a great support group, whether you're you're pushing to be a dancer or an actor or a musician. You asked about musicians. I think musicians, it's ebbs and flows. You can have a great show with five people and then have a great show with 50 people and you have to play them just, just the same. Yep. You can't look at them different. I think what, I remember hearing that, uh, a manager named Blaze James told me that about At The Drive-In. He said the reason why he had picked up the band back in the day was he had said something that he saw them play for five people and then they played just that same, that same intensity in front of 50 or 100, right? Uh, Beasties were the same way. Beastie Boys were the same way. Uh, Aces are the same way. Beartooth, I mean, Beartooth, I don't think Caleb even thinks about it that way. He, he, he would play and he'd leave his heart out on the, on the stage no matter how many people were there. That's the kind of artist he is and that's the kind of artist you need to be to make it. Absolutely. Kenny, where, where can people best connect with you and Rebel Records? I, th I think, uh, you know, it's, it's very simple. I think, I mean, feel free. We, we, do, uh, we do accept unsolicited demos through our site. So please go to redbullrecords.com. We're one of the few labels that do it. And even Rich raised his eyebrow because we don't, yeah. a lot of people don't do that. So please reach out to us that way. I'm also on Instagram, um, <laughs> Tick Dragon, um, you know, and you could also email as well. Kenny, we cannot thank you yeah. enough for doing this. Honestly, this we was really educational. Good, huh? Honestly, uh, <laughs> you, you, now I'm going to go back and look up that composer and, and how bizarre. Bernard Herman. Well, here's how crazy this is about Bernard Herman. I love Hitchcock films. My older sister for my birthday gave me a Hitchcock book. Oh, wow. Because I love uh, The Birds and I love Vertigo. I love Rear Window. I love all of these movies he's made, The Rope, all of these movies. Yes. And I love Taxi Driver so much. I had no idea why I liked them all together and until this the music is the theme and the music, music is the, the running music, thread and yeah. the music was the running thread and why I loved it all so yes. Rich thank you but you're honestly, very welcome honestly you're, you're one of the most special uh, people in this business I cherish our friendship I cherish you in this business so much and, oh, and, uh, thank you and thank you so much for all your hard work and it's an honor to be here thank you it's an honor to have you Kenny thank, thank you, you. thank you both so much thank you Oh my God. You know, I, I love Kenny so much. And, you know, just listening yeah. to this interview, you can hear why. Uh, this is a great man. This is not only a great man, but he is truly one of the most passionate, insightful people. He really gets the marrow of what it is to be an artist. Yeah. He really gets what you need to be in terms of your own integrity to work with artists. And he also gets what art is. Absolutely. I mean, like I said at the top of the show, I think this was an absolute masterclass. And I think everybody who heard this interview needs to go back and listen to it. And when they go back and finish it, go back and listen to it again and take notes because what Kenny has said in that interview is just pure gold. I mean, the passion and the energy that he brings to his work in a and and it's commensurate with the results that he's received and the success he's had with the bands that he signed. We talked about the whole story with Wiz Khalifa and what yes. happened when he was at Warner and just how that whole thing and, and everybody just thought, well, you, you, you made that mistake or whatever. And look at what ended up happening with Wiz Khalifa, one of the most influential uh, hip hop musicians of the last, you know, 10, 15 years. Yes, absolutely. And the way he spoke about, you know, the other artists that he works with, that he's looking for things that move culture. Sure. Yes. You know, not yes. necessarily the things that are going to move on the chart over the next, you know, five minutes, uh, but things that are really going to move culture and that are going to last and how you have to have integrity. And I love what he said about, you know, the qualities of what it takes to be a great A&R person. Absolutely. And, and it's lonely. It can be lonely at times. Very, very lonely. And, and you know, he discussed, and, and I think this is another reason why we have some of the guests that have been here, like the Phil Quartararo's of the world uh, in the past that, you know, he discussed the role that the mentors have had in his career and how his criteria for signing artists today goes just beyond the music and the live performances. I mean, I think it's a very important thing about going back and looking at the people that did this before you came into the game and how it's evolved and how that can give you clues into the future. Absolutely, Eric. And, and you know, the most touching part to me is, is how brutally open and honest he was when he spoke about not only, you know, music, but the films and the records and the artists that truly inspired him. And the way he said, and ultimately, 
ultimately saved his life. Yeah. Uh, you know, art really has played a major part in, in, in his life. And just the openness, that's, that's to me what was so inspiring about uh, Kenny. And, you know, this is a great lesson, I think. Kenny is a, is a role model for true artistic integrity and what you need to, you know, to be. Kenny is an artist in a great sense. He is an artist. Hey, Insiders, thanks so much for tuning into this episode. We really appreciate it. To get show notes, links, and everything that was mentioned during this interview, head on over to our official website at mubutv.com forward slash podcast forward slash show notes. If you're enjoying the content and what we're doing here on the show, please subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts from. And don't forget to rate and review our show over at iTunes. Five-star reviews are always welcome and help to ensure that our podcast stands out on the top rated and new and noteworthy charts on iTunes in our space. You can also find us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all ending with the handle Mubu TV, which is spelled M-U-B-U TV. Don't forget to catch our flagship show, the Mubu TV Insider Video Series, airing every week on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Mubu TV. This show was produced and created by Rich Ezra and Eric Knight. This show would not be here if it weren't for our amazing team, which are the following. Interview editors, Sarah Nissenbaum and Alex Taylor. Show notes and transcriptions by Jani Chang, Nicole Kaboglu, Lilia Owens, and Sarah Nissenbaum. Theme music by Disciples of Babylon. And be sure to tune in next week for another episode of the Mubu TV Insider Podcast.